Right, um, now to introduce another part of the world to you, um, the Southern Caucasus. And I have to say it's been fascinating watching everybody else's part of the world this afternoon um, to see how similar they are and yet also how interestingly different. And you'll see why later on. Uh, my relationship to this whole story actually began when I was working at a ch operating a charity in the five war zones in the Southern Caucasus. I saw an awful lot of destroyed buildings. And, um, and the thing about the Southern Caucasus is it doesn't get any publicity. And um, so a lot of people just didn't know what was going on down there. So in 2004, a group of us, uh, we set up the British Georgian Society in London as a link between the FCO, uh, the Georgian Embassy, and the UK general public who were interested in the region. Um, but <clears throat> by 2011, uh, there was there been so much historical uh, architectural damage there that myself and Stephen Nash, the Britain's first ambassador to, the, to Georgia, uh, we started the Tbilisi Heritage Group in London. And um, we've been um, uh, doing quite a few events, mostly just sort of consciousness raising events. Um, and now um, we're in the process, or I am in any way, trying to set up the National Trust in, in Georgia, uh, the international arm of the National Trust called INTO, which you might have heard of. And also, there is a Blue Shield in Tbilisi. And, um, and they're, they're, they're most all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, in fact, some of them are actually on our board for the, for the new National Trust. So, um, but first of all, um, I'd like to, uh, well, first of all, let's just show you where Georgia is. Um, oh, no. <coughs> there. There you go. Because uh, I also have a bookshop in Tbilisi, and um, we often get books delivered to Atlanta in, in America <laughs> because a lot of people actually don't know where it is and still don't know where it is, which is very interesting. Um, the last picture that I just flipped by was the uh, uh, little bit uh, ancient uh, Tbilisi Heritage Site website, but uh, we, we had one and we will again. But um, to, to inform you a little bit about what's happened in the Caucasus, um, some of you may know, some of you won't, so I'll skim it very quickly. But if you, if you we don't have a pointer, but you can just see South Ossetia and Abkhazia, uh, the regions within Georgia, and they, there have been um, separatist wars there and quite severe ones. Um, and there's also been, between Armenia and Azerbaijan, and you can see the region Nagorno-Karabakh in the bottom, there's a horrible separatist war there. And in the early 90s, there's uh, 1.3 million refugees um, in, the, in the entire southern Caucasus. And um, it produced an absolutely horrific uh, scene on the ground. And a lot of people don't know, this is Agdam, um, it's a city of 40,000. It's in Nagorno-Karabakh. It was a formerly a Zeri city. Every single building has been raised to the ground. It's, it's like going to Hiroshima. But very interestingly, as you can see, they did not destroy the mosque, which is the exact opposite of what Helen was talking about. And we were discussing uh, over tea why do these different uh, cultures value different areas of help their own culture in a different way in, in fairly similar parts of the world. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that later because I want to talk, this, describe what we have actually done physically to try and rectify some, some of the horrible destruction in the southern Caucasus. This is a refugee camp from the 2008 war um, with Russia. In, this is in Georgia when 30,000 new refugees or IDPs um, came out of South Ossetia. And this, this was um, a USAID project, and that's where they, most of them moved to. Right, now, um, it, it, the story for me personally begins in Abkhazia. And this is, a, this is actually called the Writer's House. It's in this luscious, beautiful part of the southern Caucasus on the Black Sea coast. And, and it had its, its heyday was around 1900. As you can see, this sort of Art Nouveau period villas and dachas everywhere and um, in this wonderful luscious setting uh, and in fact in the, in the 1970s Sukhumi which is the capital city was voted as the best um, city uh, in, the, in the entire Soviet Union um, but then of course we had the separatist war 
Um, and the hills there are just filled with these beautiful Art Nouveau datches and vast Soviet sanatoriums. And this is what's happened to, to nearly all of them. And they, 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 some of these buildings are very, uh, completely unique. And there I was working, and nobody even knew what, what was going on in this region. 44% of the population, all the Georgians, um, had fled. And, um, and this, this is downtown Sukumi. This picture was taken about 10 years after the war. And, uh, and even today, very little has, has changed. It's changed a little bit, but because it doesn't get any attention, um, the, the world doesn't know, and the money doesn't come in, and the interest isn't there. And even today, the population is um, more or less half of what it used to be. So if you imagine that half the population isn't there anymore, um, imagine what happens to a lot of the buildings, um, which are just unoccupied. And some of these are particularly beautiful buildings, and they're, just, they're still disappearing. Um, so what, should, what, what could we possibly do about it? Um, so I went to the UN and said, look, um, we, 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 somebody has to at least say something about this. So they said, uh, how, why don't we just do a little book or something, or, or a leaflet or, or an exhibition? And they said, OK. They gave me $500, and um, I produced this little book. Um, it's called The Architecture of Sukum, which is very controversial um, because um, the Georgians call Sukum, Sukumi, and the Abkhaz call Sukumi, Sukum. And so the, the mere title of the book put me in a very difficult position. Uh, but the Georgians have forgiven me. Um, and they've forgiven me really because of the architecture. Um, and as you can see, architecture, particularly Art Nouveau architecture, um, it is, it's like an innocent within a, uh, within a conflict zone. And, um, and these buildings have uh, such a charm and such strong memories for a lot of Georgians that, um, that they were just very interested to know what had happened to these buildings, so this, this city where a lot of them had grown up, and, had, and they all went there on holiday. So I produced this little book, and, um, but I produced it for the Abkhaz uh, because I couldn't really distribute it in Georgia with a title like that, Sukum, because I'd been getting in big trouble. But we did, we printed it in Tbilisi um, because the printer said, he said, look, I'll, I'll tell you what, I will print this book for you if you include the building that was built by my father. So we did, we included it, and, um, and he printed the book, we distributed it, it was massively successful. Um, and um, this is one of the um, this inside pages. You see, we, we went through all the historic buildings in the city, and we gave a little history about each, each building, and um, we did it in English. And this, again, is quite significant, and I'll explain why in a minute, why we did it in English. And we didn't even do it in Russian. The exhibition that went with it was in Russian and English, but the book itself we deliberately did in English because we wanted it to go beyond that region. And, um, and the, the whole tenor of my talk, my presentation today, is to say it, how we in the, in the Southern Caucasus are approaching historic preservation, because it's slightly different to a lot of people here, because you have a much, uh, you're much more widely known, you're closer to Europe, you're closer to the publicity sources, whereas down in the Caucasus we're not. And a lot of people just don't know what's going on. And anyway, that book um, was so successful, we actually had to do a reprint. Um, and, um, and then, I, I, while I was in Sukumi, I found this book in one of the, um, the bookshops. Uh, it was in Russian. And um, it's a, um, a pattern book about Art Nouveau Datchers. Now, Art Nouveau Datchers are unique. The, uh, particularly to these wooden Art Nouveau datches um, in this particular region, region and also around St. Petersburg and sort of in the Gulf of Finland, but particularly in, in Georgia. And this, this is a pattern book from 1917, and we reproduced it, we printed it again, and this time, we just do, this is a page from the inside, it's, a, it's how, how you build your own datcha. And, um, and amazingly, uh, a lot of Westerners bought this book because 
they were genuinely curious. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know. In fact, one chap was even going to build one. He, he didn't in the end, but he bought two copies and gave one to his architect. Mm -hmm. Now, with that book went an exhibition. Uh, and this, this sort of happened of its own accord, um, more or less, because the, the interest in the book, we decided to do an exhibition. This, is, this extraordinary building here is just outside St. Petersburg. And um, if you look just to the left-hand side of it, you'll see the pile of, of ash and, and, uh, and burnt uh, timbers from the dacha just to the left of it, because they were being torched. Because these, these buildings from the early 20th century are on very, very valuable land. And of course, what the, the, the new Russians wanted to do was to burn the old house and build this massive, a great modernist new one. But this exhibition, we, we drew attention to it in the same way that we did with this book on, on, on Sukumi. Um, we put international attention onto the plight of buildings in other countries because we wanted to get the local people who often didn't value their own properties. And, uh, and not only the locals, but the local authorities also sometimes, you'd be surprised, um, in, down that area, um, didn't value them. As you can see by, by and this, this row of dachas, this is in Sistororetsk, which is um, on, the, on the coast, uh, of the Baltic coast. Um, it's probably four or five other piles of burnt ash on that one street. And at any rate, I heard just the other day, I, was, I took this picture in, in 2010, and I was sure that this building would not survive, if you look at the condition of it. But I heard the other day that it has survived. Now, was it because of us? I doubt it. But it might have been. And anyway, this is, this is the process, and this is what I'm trying to sort of hand over here today. Because we, we're, it's, it's a process that's been, been going on now for quite a while. And um, in fact, that, um, that exhibition got a six-page article in Independent, and it's still there. You can, you can look at it. And, um, and again, you know, if the international community uh, advertises the fact that local architecture is of value, then often the locals start to value it. Um, we did the same thing in Tbilisi. Um, this is a, uh, a beautiful house on Ingorovka Street, um, which was scheduled to be dem demolished. And um, we, we, we actually, the British Jordan Society this time, we flew an art historian from Tbilisi to London. She gave us this talk, but we made jolly sure that this image went back to Tbilisi uh, and that Georgians could see how much we value their architecture. And I'm pleased to say that this building also has been saved. I don't know if it was because of us, but an awful lot of them weren't saved. And you know, that one has, and you know, it's a process that is continuing and I, and I personally believe in it. Um, certainly for our, our part, of our neck of the woods. Now, um, this, of course, is in down. This is in the Akmenesha Belly Street in Tbilisi. As you can see, there is a massive amount of reconstruction work going. I was there once with Gillian Dali, who's the who was the um, the director of SPAB, and she said it was the largest restoration um, building site she'd ever seen in the whole world. It was an, it was an entire kilometre of the street was being restored. And, <coughs> Some of it was done fairly well, and some of it wasn't. But the point about this is, and the point about the Southern Caucasus, and particularly Georgia, is that, and we've seen this uh, this, this afternoon as well, uh, more damage was done after the war than during the war, uh, in, the, in the reconstruction process. And um, in Tbilisi, we've lost that. That's right in Freedom Square, right in the center. Uh, they said it had to come down, there was nothing wrong with it. Ten minutes, thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, we've lost that, which is right, again right in the heart of Tbilisi. Um, the Lemontov House, that's what it is today. They started to um, uh, recon... They, they decided that the only way they could save this building was to destroy it. And um, it's rather like the Vietnamese War. And um, with the villagers, and um, so they, 
and the, the trouble is in the Caucasus, and I, and I think in other regions too, there isn't a very uh, established system of, of reconstruction. There isn't, the local people don't know how to reconstruct their own buildings. So they just send in demolition companies, and this is what happened here. And it created a huge furore, and now it's been stuck like that for the last uh, four or five years. And it's just basically, as you can see, it's collapsing. That is also gone. Um, it's a 17th century Armenian church. The dome just went straight down, not because of the war, just because of neglect. Uh, extraordinary. Um, and I just threw this in so that if you're, anyone's interested to see Georgia losing one of its World Heritage Sites, the UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is the Bagrat Cathedral in Kutaisi. It was listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. <coughs> then the, the Saakashvili administration, along with the church, decided to reconstruct it and turn it back into a church. It looked rather like Tintin Abbey beforehand, and now it's, it's been, this, this was halfway through it, now it's been completely finished and rebuilt. It's got a glass um, uh, S, uh, sort of lift on the other side, and it's been delisted, um, or being delisted, as we speak. Luckily, there is a, a, the Galati Cathedral, which was twinned with it, um, is, 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 hasn't been touched, and that will remain as a World Heritage Site. So Georgia will still have three World Heritage Sites, but they've lost this aspect of it. Then you have the other problem, which is... Uh, investment. Uh, um, and this is a, a sovereign wealth fund. What is somewhere to put their money? So they chose Tbilisi. This is on Rustaveli Avenue, the, the main, main drag in Tbilisi. The, the building in the front is the Institute of Marxism and Leninism. Um, Kopinski wanted to build a, um, a big hotel there, uh, and they were going to knock it down. It's got, I, I haven't got time to show you all the, um, the details of it, but it's got a, a beautiful fresco along the front, um, and um, the interior was gorgeous. We managed to save it, just the, the front of it, but the thing in the back has gone up, unfortunately. Now, this is restoration in, in the old town of Tbilisi. Um, not, as you might imagine, this extraordinary um, green object in the, in the foreground, which has a lot of acronyms, um, but it is in fact the Bridge of Peace, and it was built by the president um, in I think 2007. But that's one thing, but the thing that really concerns a lot of us in the heritage world is the reconstruction of the Kala district, which you can see in the background. And you can see all the, the rooftops there, they're all the same color. They're all the same tiles. Uh, they're all cheap Turkish tiles bought and then just done this mass renovation of the old town in which the, the, you saw one of the bulldozers earlier on in the picture. They just, they flatten the house. <coughs> they then take the bricks, the old bricks, they slice them down the middle. They build breeze block imitation of the house or a pastiche. <coughs> Whoops. And then they, um, and they stick the, the bricks on the front again of the house. Uh, and they restore some of the balconies. Usually, they build an extra floor or, or sometimes two extra floors. And this was the way that reconstruction had happened in Tbilisi between about 2005 and 2012. And in fact, it's still going on to some degree now. Um, we believe that Georgia lost as much of its historic architecture in those six years as it did in the entire Soviet period of 70 years. Uh, just because of reconstruction. Uh, this is actually, you can just see Marcus Binney in the middle. He's the, the director of Save Europe's Heritage, with his hand up in the air, um, trying to save the Emeli building I showed you before. Um, we, we partly saved a bit of it, but that was before the monster went up behind it. Now, um, another point, an important point I want to make, and it's very applicable to our part of the world, and I think some of yours as well, um, <clears throat> is international money, in international donors and international loans that are, that are given with good intentions to restore um, traditional architecture or to help or to reconstruct infrastructure um, that goes wrong. And um, this is Signagi. It's, um, it's a Silk Road 
town, a beautiful hilltop town um, in, in the Kaheti region of Georgia. And um, this picture was taken in 1990. Um, now, the World Bank gave a, a very large amount of money, uh, a very large loan, to the Georgian government to reconstruct it. But they didn't do any policing of it whatsoever. And the Georgians went ahead and did the same thing. They built, put all these horrible uh, uniform Turkish roof tiles again over the whole city and a town, and then they built this in the middle of it. And it has completely destroyed the ambience of this little hilltop um, Silk Road town. And now they made it into a tourist center. And of course, the tourists kind of come in and go, yes, but w w what happened here? You know, and and it, it just doesn't work. And tourism is the largest industry for Georgia. It was, and it hopefully will be again. And by the way, Georgia has got a lot more peaceful recently, and it is now safe to visit, just in case anyone is curious, because I'm always asked this question. Um, now, this is, uh, this is the last slide but one, but there's a, there's a lot to say about it. <laughs> because this is a World Bank project that went badly and then went well. And, and, and uh, this is an example, and hopefully we can we can all learn from this. Um, now, the story of this is very similar to Signagi. Uh, World Bank, with all the, the best intentions, wanted to help restore um, a, this very unique area of Georgia called the Tusheti district. It's right up against the, the border with Dagestan. It's in the high Caucasus, as you can see. There are 4,000 meter peaks all around it. And um, it's extraordinary old medieval city. Hello? <laughs> is, is it, it's not for me, is it? Um, so we've got um, a situation where it's just going to happen all over again. Oh. <laughs> um, now, I think this, this process started four years ago, uh, but we've been a little bit forewarned. And um, when I say we, I suppose um, I'm talking about the heritage community in, 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 in Georgia. And, um, and very luckily for, for Georgia, really, um, there was a change of government in 2012 and 2013. And the old regime disappeared, and a new regime came in. And because the restoration work on this village had already started, and they'd be doing the same thing. They were ripping all the old plastic, uh, all the old wooden windows and doors out, just chucking them away, and putting in Turkish cheap white frame uh, doors and windows. And the the then uh, the new deputy minister of culture, Marini Mizandari, who I'm working with now, setting up the National Trust in Georgia. Uh, she found out about this and went apoplectic. And, um, and, and it was very good that she did. Because usually, uh, people are scared to criticize the donors, which is where we come in, because we're, we're the outsider. We, 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 we have less to lose. But she just got so angry that she, she went straight to the World Bank office and said, look, you know, you're, you're supposed to be helping our heritage site, but in fact, you're, you're ruining it. Uh, didn't get any response, so she went to Washington. Um, and she talked to them in Washington, and they did listen. And they sent an Italian consultant over. <coughs> he did a, a report on how to properly reconstruct, this is called uh, Dartlow Village. And then it was re the project was restarted, and I, this picture was taken just a year ago, uh, in fact, a bit less, and they've done it really beautifully. And all it takes is someone somewhere to either get angry or a, a, a group of foreigners and or journalists to make a little bit of a fuss, and these large funding organizations can and will change their tune. And I was just in um, Darklow um, last summer having a wonderful walking holiday, which is another wonderful thing about Georgia. Um, and I saw they're actually reconstructing some of the old 
uh, houses here uh, in the old, the original technique too. And they've been, they, they've, been, they've hired builders from Dagestan who, lo- who know the old dry stone wall techniques, and they're teaching them to the locals. Uh, and so this is really is a success story. And I think I'm going to end on this this note. I've got, I didn't just have time to show you the National Trust of Georgia. We're on the way. We're not quite ready yet for you, but we will be next year. So thank you very much.